Please continue. Tell us about this truth you discovered. Very well. Bear in mind, however, that the purpose of this conversation is not to impart scholarly knowledge, for such requires that you comprehend the subject matter, which you will not. We will forego the intricacies of our scientific methodology and deal only with the conclusion, the end of our society and our world. We acknowledge, with regret, that your star is in the midst of the same panic-induced cataclysm that befell Denet III. As such, in order to avoid causing undue distress, we will refrain from explicitly stating how much time you have remaining. You are entirely too kind. I pray you recount your tale as you see fit. In the beginning, the universe was but a tiny particle. Then suddenly, this particle began to expand. Having remained entirely in the bounds of your star, the phenomenon may be difficult for your kind to grasp. But this expansion has since continued unabated. Speculating that the universe could not grow indefinitely, we sought to learn what might occur and made a worrying discovery. The stars will continue to spread apart as will their finite thermal energies. Eventually, all heavenly bodies will grow cold and freeze. No new stars will be born, and the universe will enter onto an eternal ice age. of proving that this determination was erroneous. We scrutinized our research from all angles, even as we sought to avert the everlasting winter. The endeavor proved fruitless. So infamously so, in fact, that it became synonymous with vain effort. The universe as we know it would end and there is no way to prevent it. Beneath the weight of this knowledge, our society stagnated. Though we had time still, it was a cold comfort. Why strive for anything when desolation is assured? When our wealth of wisdom accumulated since the dawning of our kind would be forever lost. No civilization would rise from our ashes. No scholar recover our knowledge. In silence unbroken, naught would stir. Intellect was once our pride. Overnight, it became our shame. Our works, monuments to futility. Immortality, our greatest invention, became a source of suffering. Rather than suffer on, many chose to unmake themselves by means of etheric exsanguinators. Etched upon these stones are the testaments of such souls. Though many left no words at all, thinking it a pointless gesture. Once we have obtained vessels of flesh, we likewise intend to vanish. If you understand this, Understand aught of our tale. You will abandon your quest for knowledge. 
Ignorance truly is bliss. If you would cling to your illusory happiness, remain primitive and pure. It is the only way. So, that's your story. While I appreciate your advice, I will not heed it. Convinced though you may be of this truth, it is yours and not mine. Indeed, truth, I have ever believed, is in the eye of the beholder. Are you suggesting that we have reached a faulty conclusion? That our science failed us. Hardly. As you yourself said, the subject matter is beyond my comprehension. And that, I accept, is true. I do not possess the knowledge to prove or disprove your conclusion. In my mortal years, I doubt I could even approach the wisdom of the air. But of one thing am I absolutely certain. I would not be happier in ignorance. You stole a no! You mustn't! The most important lesson I've learned is that learning isn't simply passing one's eyes over words. Nay, <laughs> tis when understood for oneself that knowledge attains its true value. This is what has sustained me, driven me onward in joy and wonder, in anger and sorrow. The universe may end, and all may be for naught, but I will live as I always have. I will always seek out new knowledge, and no conclusion of yours, no matter how grim, can dampen my desire. I suppose it is only to be expected. Their feeble minds cannot fathom the terrifying gravity of it all. But worry not. We consider it our duty to enlighten you. And we will not stop until you grasp the full extent of our despair. Keep calm and listen well. Though my body will soon dissipate, there may be a way to restore it. Asm's magic. So long as our souls remain, you can use it to summon us back. But you mustn't, for it would mean losing our way forward. This I only reveal so that you can promise not to invoke the magic. We came here knowing what victory may cost, so press on. Press on. And do not look back. I shall join thee. As subterfuge is not required, thou shalt not suffer for mine absence. Riange. My resolve hath never been as strong as thine. Full oft have I wavered in my decisions, and afterwards been stricken with regret. In spite of this, I may still stand with my comrades, supporting them as they attempt the greatest of feats. This truth I have learned in the course of our journey. And many though my shortcomings may be, I may also claim to excel in prophecies. My studies, into which have granted me the flexibility of mind needed to bend this malleable reality.
Thus shall I hope that thou mayest have the strength to resist and our comrades the strength to continue. With you to urge us on, how could we possibly fail? What's this? An extinguished civilization? Rekindled? That's right! Our quest doesn't end here! We'll press on! And we will find you! There. That's where you'll find me. Is that... another star? Of the stars we visited, most were already devoid of life. And where there was life still, the inhabitants wished for death. But even death, we learned, isn't truly the end. It is but a part of the cycle of rebirth. Souls return to the star, or in its absence, a larger flow, and eventually they are reborn. Alive again, to know suffering anew. True salvation lies not in dying. It lies in not being born. This is the gift I would give to you. To all life on beautiful Atheris. To that end, we created an egg wherein life cannot quicken. That dead sun. Attain it if you can before your friend's emotions fade away, along with their protection.
<sighs> well, I'm out of ideas. As am I. Operating such consoles is trying enough. But if we can't even activate it... Perhaps there is a way. First, consider the world that has been recreated here. Its inhabitants were machines who gathered combat data to enhance themselves. And among the many wars they waged, the most notable was that against the dragons. As you've doubtless surmised, I believe this was the homeworld of Omega. Sid built a jamming device to defeat it, a device which generated massive bursts of lightning, its sole weakness. That's all well and good, but what does that... Wait, you're not thinking to strike the console with lightning, are you? Huh. As a matter of fact, I am. Ask yourselves this. Why would an entity as puissant as Omega not be designed to suppress the effects of lightning? Because it relies upon it, or something akin to it, as a source of energy. My thoughts exactly. And there is a good chance the same is true of the Omicrons and their devices. So, shall I cast caution to the wind and try something reckless and dramatic? Very well. Here I go. It... it worked! for you. Of late, no mission orders have been issued. Why not? Has there been some manner of trouble? Reply. The extended operations unit is yet to determine guidelines for future assignments. All strategies are calculated, devised, and actioned in accordance with set guidelines. In the interim, all citizens are directed to maintain a state of combat readiness. And reply. Awaiting query. Can you tell us why the Extended Operations Unit hasn't yet determined the guidelines? I'm able to comply. Information unavailable or access restricted. In that case, is it possible for us to communicate directly with the unit? Access denied. I'm able to establish connection. Is there anything you can tell us? Have there been any abnormalities, like a, a threat to the star or widespread unrest? Reply. Negative. All citizens continue to operate at maximum efficiency. If your operations are suboptimal, please proceed to a maintenance facility for evaluation. Otherwise, stand by at your designated post. End reply. End transmission. Closing connection.
I could activate it again, but I doubt it would be productive. What do you think? If all the Omicrons really were running as efficiently as it claimed, then I doubt they were hoping for life here to end. As this Sir told us, there just haven't been any new instructions, and everyone is standing by. Should be standing by at any rate. If there are those that are neglecting their duties, perhaps we can glean a clue from them. I propose we take another look around, and also try to find the operations unit.
as you have surmised, I am part of the shared intelligence of Stigma Run. It is, was, my charge to determine the optimal path to achieving my prime function. This body had been abandoned by its former owner and lay unused. I took it and abandoned my own, and with it, my duty. May we ask why you did this? From what we gather, it seems to be a personal matter. Our kind did not always work as they do now. Long ago, we possessed frail and feeble bodies. Beleaguered by stronger races, our ancestors took to augmenting their flesh in order to defend themselves. What began with limited parts eventually spread to the whole body, and at last, a means was discovered to convert the mind into data, rendering even the brain obsolete. Such complete mechanical beings were called the Omicrons, and by their might, we came to reign supreme over the star. Even then, we did not feel secure, for we knew that the universe was home to civilizations aside from our own, civilizations that may be stronger still than us. Rather than risk becoming the subjugated, we chose to become the subjugator. We began our conquest of the stars that we might acquire the resources and knowledge we needed to reign supreme. We were successful in that endeavor. So powerful did we become, we could lay low even the mighty dragons. But then something unexpected happened. I began experiencing an error. I could no longer determine an optimal path. You were malfunctioning. I performed numerous full system scans, each time finding no issues. Yet the error persisted. It was then that I speculated. What could happen if we grew so powerful as to have no equal? To become stronger was essential to our existence. Our every action has been in service to this objective. But if nothing lies beyond this, can it be truly said that it was essential? Have we been engaging only in wanton destruction? You could find no threat to justify your purpose. The Omicrons will never leave this star. They will stand by until the reserves of energy are spent. For I have no path to offer them. None. It is not our place to pass judgment on the deeds of the Omicrons. But surely... This does not have to spell the end of your people. With your power and knowledge, the possibilities are endless. Why not seek out a new purpose? That is impossible. In the beginning, we have a higher purpose than our pursuit of power. But we must side of it when we so irrevocably altered our fundamental forms. When we cast aside our flesh, 
Thank you that we cast aside all that defined us. Nothing remains of who we once were. I have no aspirations. No longer can I dream. The vital spark is lost. Lost amidst circuitry and code and commands. Oh. I believe I know how to overcome this despair. The words are ready in my mind, but ere I speak them... I want you to make me a promise. Be it across time or space, our promises have always connected us. And so I ask that you indulge me once more, that this won't be the end. Is that so? In that case, I won't hold back. First, I want to visit Ishgard with you. Properly. We scarcely had time to look around last time. I should like it very much if you could show me the sights. Next, you must regale me with your greatest adventures, in the places where you lived them, if possible. I may have read about all your deeds, but there is no substitute for a first-hand account. And last but not least, a new adventure together, unlike any we've experienced before. We'll travel the lands, cross the seas, and take to the skies upon the eternal wind, and it will be marvelous. It will. If you would humor me a moment, when we awaken each morning, how can we prove that we're the same individual who retired the night before? Through the remembrance of past events, we might say. We have our memories, yet there are times when we forget or recall incorrectly. What of our bodies, then? It is the same one, we might say, yet technically speaking, as living beings, our bodies are constantly changing. It will never be as it was at an earlier point in time. Our souls are no more immutable. On our star, people are known to inherit the souls of others, yet they are decidedly different beings. For my part, I've subjected my totality to much and more. I've made my body into an extension of a tower, blended my soul and memories with those of another self. And each time I would ask myself, what is it that makes me me? We are able to determine an answer. No. But that doesn't mean I'm confused. It simply means I'm the same as everyone else. So I posit this. Who we were need not prescribe what we now hold in our hearts. Whatever came before, what matters most is the present. For me, that is being here with my friends, full proud of how much we've grown together. So I urge you to not give up. Heed your heart's desire, 
and hope that the future you long for shall be realized. I cannot. We cannot. We cannot understand desire, nor comprehend hope. We do not know how to create such things. We are not unlike you and I. I too have struggled to find the courage to express and embrace my wants. If you like, I will tell you a tale. A tale of a world on the brink. Of a people who never gave up on the future. Of a man who realized his grandest dreams and then awakened to a grander reality. Idiot! Just once, just once, stay with us to the end! 